Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is G.Host. I'll be your host tonight. Watch me host. It has been decades since the whole witch hunt incident in Salem, Massachusetts. And today, we are here to finally bury the hatchet, just as they buried me all those years ago. I have brought some very special guests here tonight to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Salem Witch Trials. We're going to have Elizabeth, Hale, and Danforth. All of them, people hugely affected by the incident. We will discover their secrets, secrets of their relatives, secret relationships, oh, so many secrets, I can't wait. <clears throat> Introducing our first guest, someone you all know, the once depressed widow of John Proctor, it's the one and only Elizabeth Proctor. My humblest greetings be to you, ladies and gentlemen. And by the way, it's no longer Elizabeth Proctor. Ah, you've moved on, I see. You've forgotten all about poor John, all cold and dead in the ground. Mmm, yep. Ha! Alright. Well, Elizabeth, could you tell your audience about uh, your new husband? How did you move on after the death of your kind and caring husband? Kind and caring? Eh, that's a bit of a stretch. I guess he was kind of okay. Uh, at least until he cheated on me with that witch Abigail. I was in total despair, and that's when I met my current husband, Paris. Paris? Reverend Paris? Was he not a married man already? Oh, yes. Paris was a married man, which is why we could only meet secretly for the next three years until she tragically died for a Unknown reason that I totally have no hand in. <laughs> uh, yeah, of, of course. Anyways, so, uh, how did you meet your current husband, Paris? Well, uh, funny story. Um, I knew it's wrong, but you see, I was so angry at the time, so I decided to take sweet old revenge by cheating right back on Proctor. Cheating on Proctor? But I thought you'd never lie. Well, I never said I didn't cheat on Proctor. And in any case, I'm glad I did. Look where Mary and Proctor got me. In jail, destined for the gallows. Thank God Proctor died before you didn't realize. Realize what? Well, you see, when I was sentenced to die, it wasn't Proctor's child uh, I was carrying. It was Paris's. You see, it was our love that saved me. You mean to say that the child that saved you from execution wasn't John Proctor's child, but rather that no good, rotten, hell-praising shame of a Reverend Paris? Yep. I'd be careful how you talk about my, uh, my husband uh, if I were you. I suggest you start minding your own business. You're right, Elizabeth. <laughs> Listen, I think it's time you knew. Oh, hold that thought. The, here comes our next guest. You know him as the witch expert turned fraud. The man who signed off all the deaths until his change of heart, Reverend Hill. Good afternoon, everyone. And for the record, I do not like being called a fraud. Uh, I believe my change of heart was good character development. And furthermore... Yeah, whatever, drama queen. Sit down. Oh, hello, Reverend Hill. <laughs> I'm pleased to see you here. Hello, Elizabeth. How have you been faring? As well as anyone can be after everything. Uh, I understand you too well, unfortunately. Enough dilly-dallying, and let's get down to business. Tell us, Hale, why did you kill all those innocent people? <laughs> I wouldn't exactly call it killing. Are you saying you're a cold-blooded killer? Lord, no, if you allow me to explain. But you were the one who signed the document granting Danforth the right to hang the accused, correct? Uh, yes, uh, but... <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Reverend Hale, the killer. That's not true. You see, if you were in my position... Shut up, man. Your time here is up. You know, if we had the time and money, I'd let you talk all day, but the truth is, we don't. This is my show, not yours, okay? <sighs> Some people, you give them an ounce of screen time, and they just become absolute camera hogs. Anyway, here comes our next guest, the one and only, the judge, jury, and executioner of Salem, the greatest ex-judge and ex-convict, Dan Ford. It's going to take on one of all day. How dare you show your face here again? Ugh. You have ruined my life. I wish you were the one who was hung instead. Now, Elizabeth, don't be too harsh. Remember, we're all children of God. My word is final in this town. And if you don't like it, then you can go join Proctor in his grave. You can't miss it. It's right next to all the others Hale so graciously had killed. 
Okay, I take it back. You're the worst. Says the scrub. Give him hell. I want you out of my life, out of my town, you no good, dirty, rotten. Well, this is off to a great start. Whoa, 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 whoa. Enough! Let's break up this violence and take our seats, please. Thank you. All right, now let's get into some questions that were submitted by our audience. We all know the dreadful Abigail. What? Don't mention the name of that spawn of the devil here. She's not been heard of in years. Why would you mention her? Oh, God, here come the flashbacks. That she-devil is the reason my husband was killed. I think she was just a confused young girl. Shut up! I still wish you were dead, even though I hate Abigail more. Wow, let's settle down here. I was just trying to ask a question. I think it would be best just to move on. Good. I can't have the thought of that devil in my head. Well, okay, Elizabeth, you seem very hostile tonight. But, Hale, this is a question for you. It comes from one of our viewers, Tom77 at Putnam.com. He writes, what side were you really on? Well, what kind of a question is that? I was on the side of the innocent, free others from being hanged. Was that after you gave Danforth the document, which granted him the ability to hang as many of the accused as he desired, the document with your name on it? <laughs> No, I, I would never. I freed others like Tichuba and Paris' daughter from the devil himself. All right, now that that's over with, Danforth, what were your feelings to Abigail after the court case? Don't ask him that. Why would you ask him that? What kind of a host are you? What kind of a show is this? Who are you? Who am I? Oh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, breathe in, out, in, out, in. Well... After the court case, I had a conversation with Abigail, and I made sure she was okay because I was concerned that she was fading into the afterlife. <sighs> Shut up! You supported her! Because she was the true witch, and she manipulated you and made you accuse my husband. You caused his death. You! You were the one bewitched. You can't undo the past, you crazy widow. You son of a witch! Oh, just please! Well, let's, uh, let's, let's take a break before a fight breaks out. Um, we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. I'm GDOT Host, and this is Host, hosting the hosting show. While hosting this body before the break, I almost got killed again. What? What? Say what? Oh, I said, um, how are you guys all feeling? Oh, pretty good. Other than the fact that this psycho woman over here threatened me. What? I, well, I wasn't threatening. How could you say that about me? I bet you were just targeting me because you were wrong. Oh yeah, Dan Ford, how does it feel to be wrong? That's probably why you were never sent to be a Boston judge and stuck here. Lady, control your tone with me. I am the great Dan Ford. My pen has been sentenced dozens to death, and I wouldn't mind adding you to the list. Who's threatening who now, huh? Pray thee peace. This could be going better. I feel like I'm on a reality show. Uh, you, you are on a reality show. My reality show. Oh! What kind of a priest are you? Hey, I am not a priest. I'm a reverend. Get it right or don't get it at all. He's a fraud. That's it. Hold me back. Hold Why is nobody holding me back? Anyway, I have a surprise for you guys. This gathering marks the day of the hanging of John Proctor. Yeah, damn. And I've gathered you all here today to reveal that I, G. Host, the host of this show, am in fact the ghost of John Proctor. Okay. Cool. Um, hello. I thought I, I thought I'd get more of a reaction out of that. I said I am the ghost of John Proctor. Nothing. I stayed up all night writing that. Do you really expect us to believe that? The truth is that ghosts, witches, and everything... Nonsense. All of it. It doesn't really phase us out anymore. What? Yeah, in retrospect, this show has helped us get whatever we had to say off our chests. I feel much better about the situation, don't you guys? Yeah, as much as I hate Danforth, Yelling at him really helped me come to grips with this whole situation. Our feelings mutual. So you guys don't believe in witches anymore? No. Nope. You see, after the trials, we didn't know what to believe anymore. 
So some of us look to the Lord more than ever before. And some of us choose to stray away. But no one was punished for being less faithful. No, it was quite the opposite. Instead of dividing our town like the trials did, this new way of life seemed to strengthen us. It brought us closer together. Uh-huh. <laughs> I see. I think I speak for all three of us when I say that we aren't afraid of you. You're the past. And this whole show has been about to s trying to settle our differences and move on from the past. And you have helped us and have made sure this show ended in the way it was intended to. <laughs> well, uh... To be honest, this show was actually supposed to end with you all at each other's throats, making you pay for not only the death of me, but many others in the town. But whatever. This is, uh, this is nice. Yeah, yeah it's supposed like... to work out good. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so can I come out now? <gasps> Uh-oh. Is that who I think it is? <gasps> what in God's name are you doing here? Abby! Abby? You know, it's just How like you to show your face show around your face here. here. I want my mommy. Dad, I want your soul. I want my mommy. I also want my mommy. We will be right back. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show. Please ignore these three now. It's just Abigail and I now. Now, Abby, now that this is all over, can you tell us what really happened in the forest that day? Oh, it's quite a long story, really, but um, I'll shorten it for you. Essentially, I drank a potion to kill Elizabeth Brock during me by Chichibu. Sadly, it didn't quite work out the way I planned. You are the devil! Leave before I break free and stab you in the stomach and see how you like it. Oh, you think you are everything and more. Well, John liked me better than you. And where were you? I know you were attending to your two bratty children. Well, why did John dump you for me then, huh? He didn't actually dump me. He would never dump me for a dumpster like you. Oh, <laughs> oh that's that. A dumpster? Oh yeah. Oh wait. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. All righty then. Let's uh, let's move on before someone really gets hurt. Danfor, now that she is here, please tell us why did you side with Abigail during the trial? Well, you see, I decided to side with Abigail because before the trial, she was stabbed in the stomach by the psycho over here, and during the trial, she was in terror. Even before she was almost taken in the afterlife, 100% innocent. That is physically impossible. A mere puppet cannot cause harm in real life. Can you cite your sources? Indeed I can. Wikipedia. Well then how do you explain her stab wound? Well, she must have done it herself, that crazy woman. Now why would I ever do that? I know what you did. You are the real murderer of my husband. You are done for. You know what? Meet me in the parking lot. We'll, we'll, you'll we'll figure this out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, meet me outside. How about that? Alright. Well, so what are you doing after this? That's about all the time we have for tonight. I hope you enjoyed my hosting. Now, this is the ending that I wanted. Shut up! I was price right. food. Yeah, That's all, food. folks. <laughs> Shut up. Are we, getting, are we getting paid? Shut up. Okay. Oh, that's fine. That's all, folks. Thank <laughs> you.